guys, welcome back to our channel. So today I'm going to be doing a pre-bath video. This is just showing you what I do before I bathe Stassi. Um, and the very first thing that I do is get all of my supplies together. I gather everything up that I'm going to need and that way I'm ready. Um, for her bath when the time comes. So there are a few things that I do right before I bathe her um, because you want to just um, prepare them for the bath, I guess, as best as possible. So the very first thing that I do is I clip away carefully all of the rubber bands that is in her top knot. Um, so I am using this little scissors here. Sadly, I do not know where I got these. I want to say that I got this from a bow company years ago that is no longer in business. It has a little hook on the end which grabs the little rubber bands really, really good. And I have yet to find a scissors as good as this one. So unfortunately, I can't link you to this particular pair of little top knot scissors, but if you do a search for top knot scissors, you um, should find something similar. So you wanna go through the top knot and just carefully pull your bow away because I have in haste cut the rubber bands off of bows before just because I wasn't paying attention. And I haven't done her top knot in a few days, so she is a little, little knotty going on. A little knottiness going on, rather. Um, so just cutting away all of these bands to make sure that she does not have any more rubber bands in her hair. This top knot probably needs to be trimmed a little bit um, I do trim it just a little bit because if not, it really flops in her face and it's pretty long right now. So she may get a little trim after her bath. And I can show you how I do that in another video. Okay, the next thing that I do would be to comb out this this uh, previous top knot. I am using the little five inch face comb by Chris Christensen. I love this comb. You can also use a regular, the regular rat tail comb by Chris Christensen. You know, those are my favorites. They are more pricier, but they do last. You don't need both. You do not need the face comb and the rat tail comb. You can do that with either, or with both, should I say. So I guess the basic thing that you want to do is to comb your dog out before the bath so that you are pretty much not free um, before you bathe them because if you if you don't do that, then you could risk the chance of that wet hair just matting down. So you wanna make it, you know, not free before you start. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in with her facial hair here. Sorry if you hear the snorting in the background, that is Finley. She uh, is quite loud with her snorting. So I kind of hold underneath her chin right here. I'm, I'm holding the hair under with her facial hair here. Sorry if you hear the snorting in the background. That is Finley. She uh, is quite loud with her snorting. So I kind of hold underneath her chin right here. I'm, I'm holding the hair under with her facial hair here. Sorry if you hear the snorting in the background. That is Finley. She uh, is quite loud with her snorting. 
So I kind of hold underneath her chin right here. I'm, I'm holding the hair under with her facial hair here. Sorry if you hear the snorting in the background. That is Finley. She uh, is quite loud with her snorting. So I kind of hold underneath her chin right here. I'm, I'm holding the hair under with her ear. So I kind of go systematically just from the face all the way down her body. sure if I'm going to do a whole video from start to finish or if I'm going to break this up into a couple of videos. So we shall see. It depends on how long I make this. I might just do a whole whole bath video because you don't need to see every single thing that I do. I mean you do but not uh, you know me brushing her for 15 minutes which is probably what it's going to take. All right, the next thing that I do here is I secure her little face, her little precious little face, um, with my hands like this. It's not hurting her at all. And I use my little um, mustache trimmer. It's made by Wall, and I will link that. It's the Wall Stylique. And... She's a little off-center for me, so I need to make sure I, I get this right or else she's going to have an off-center little um, area right here. So I shave this little area, the little dark area right here on her because it just keeps it clean. I believe that it looks better. It doesn't get all nasty. And she's been used to this since she's a very young puppy, so it doesn't really bother her. Um, but this is the little Styly wall trimmer. And I just make like little short motions as to not keep the trimmer on her skin for a long period of time because obviously that would give her like a burn, right? So you don't want to do that. So just short little, short little movements all in this little area. And a good way to get them used to this when you're first starting is to turn it on and just hold it up against them like this. Don't actually do any cutting until they get used to the noise because it obviously does not hurt them. It's just like rubbing something against your skin. I mean, unless you, like I said, leave it on too long or overdo it. But the main thing is getting them used to the noise because this can be quite frightening to a dog who has never heard that before. So you want to go slow and, um, you know, get them used to it first. But she is very, very good. She's used to that. But do you see how that just, just makes this so much cleaner and it makes her beard, you know, really stand out. So she is five years old now. So she's been used to doing all this stuff for a long time. Luckily... I do not really have to groom her every day like I used to do. So when she was a puppy, probably for the first, oh, I don't know, two years, um, I would have to basically do her top knot every day and, uh, you know, do her face washes every day. And it was quite a lot to keep up with. But over the years, she has gotten so much easier. And as a matter of fact, when I do take her to the groomer, she goes to the groomer about once every two months just for a trim around her skirt. And, um, you know, her little private parts uh, get trimmed up a little bit 
and her belly gets trimmed up a little bit. So I take her about every two months. And the groomer is just amazed at, she is so easy to groom. I mean, look at this. I mean, her coat really is amazing. Now, I know a lot of people ask me about her coat. Um, so, to be honest with you, she comes from a very good show breeder who breeds for this beautiful coat. So, I, you know, cannot say that, you know, every Shizu is going to have this type of coat because like anything, like humans, some people have straight hair, some people have wavy hair, some people have curly hair, some people have coarse hair or silky hair. Um, all I know is her hair is amazing and it really has not been a problem um, at all keeping her in long coat. So that's really good. So what I'm using right now is I'm using the Chris Christensen butter comb. This is the coarse fine comb. So we have coarse, uh, wider spaced um, teeth here and the finer spaced teeth there. And I'm just going through her coat. So you wanna get all of those knots out. And of course, you know, she gets a little knotty but nothing that I can't handle. You wanna do it in sections, and if you notice, I'm holding her hair so that it's not pulling and tugging on her skin. But if you can see, I'll show you in one second, this is what I'm pulling out. So it's these little bitty knots that just, you know, occur from her Lying, you know, lying down and being rubbed and being loved. Oh my girl. She's such a good dog, y'all. She really is. She's a sweet baby. Sweet baby. Alright, and then we're going to do her back half. Again, I'm holding her down by the, the skin. Um, to be honest, I rarely use a brush on Stasi. Rarely, very rarely, as a matter of fact, I use the comb because it gets down to the skin and it does everything that I need it to do. Now, I will use a pin brush occasionally. Um, I do love my Chris Christensen pin brush, which is in storage right now. So I have another cheaper one and it's not as good, but, um, but I mainly use the combs anyway. So I'm just going around her body and combing her out before her bath. And you can see we're picking up, picking up the undercoat, I guess is what that is. But you can also see that the comb is really gliding through. Now, one thing I would like to mention is a lot of people want to keep their Shizus or any breed in long coat because, you know, it's beautiful and they love it. Um, but if you decide to do that, you do need to be committed to do that, to keep them in long coat because wanting it and keeping up with it is two different things. And if you do not keep up with the brushing or the combing, your dog could get matted and it's actually very painful for them and will result in them having to get shaved down to the skin. So if you're gonna do it, make the commitment to do it. And if you can't keep up with it, then do the right thing and just get a puppy cut because that's cute too. It's all in what your lifestyle can afford. And you know, some people don't wanna be doing this on a Sunday like I'm doing right now. Um, and then other people like me, it's like, well, you know what? It's worth it because I love her long coat. She's easy. Grayson's coat is the hard one because this is a very silky coat. It's, you know, it's easy. Grayson, um, my sheepdog, 
that is a major commitment there because she is um, very coarse. Her, her coat is dense, coarse, and it's so thick. So the mats, you know, the little knots that come up on her is quite a challenge to keep up with. And plus she's not quite as good as Stassi. So that makes a huge difference, of course. I am almost finished the comb out. And you also want to make sure that you get the legs. It does help if you take your uh, long coat dog to the groomer to have them shave the belly just right up the middle. Um, and then I believe they also shave Stasi's underarms right here because you can't see that. So there's no really, you know, there's not a reason that that needs to be there. You might as well just take some of that hair off because it does make it a lot easier to keep up with them if you don't have that belly hair and that underarm hair. The underarm hair is, is part of where it really can get knotty. So they just trim that up a little bit with her little um, private parts. And you just want to be very specific with any groomer that you go to because groomers tend to be scissor happy. You know, they, they think it's like a... Um, it's like the chef, you know? It's like, oh, well, let me add a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this. Well, no, that's not what I wanted. So be very, very specific with whatever groomer you decide to go with because you could come out with results that you're not going to like. So I am extremely picky with who I go to because of that reason. And I know that, you know, I'm neurotic with my request but that's okay because this is, you know, these are my dogs and I want them how I want them and I do a lot to, uh, to keep them up. So I wanna make sure that they are exactly how I want them. So beautiful, you're so beautiful. It's important that you give them lots of, you know, loves and talk to them and just rub them to make it enjoyable you know a lot of people have asked me you know how did how is she so good why is she so good um, my dog just really you know is all over the place I can't get my dog to stay still um, well my two words of advice is or three words of advice start early the earlier the better uh, make it enjoyable if you have to do treats or anything like that to make this a pleasant experience for them. Um, you know, our grooming time is our bonding time. So she loves to get this one-on-one -on -one attention, especially with me with the multiple dogs. You know, she this is her time. So she loves it because she can get that specialized attention from me. And then the other thing is to practice, 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 do it often. Don't just do this once and then don't do it. I mean, you know, you have to do it all the time. Like I said, when she was a puppy, it was our normal routine to do this every single day. So she got very, very used to this. All right, and then the last thing that I do before the bath is I treat her eyes with this product here. It's called Safe Eye. I will leave the link to this. It, they change the name all the time. They go back and forth between iSafe and Safe Eye, but it's the same product. What it is, is it's a sort of like, I don't know what type of oil. It might be like a little mineral oil or something that you put in the eyes to protect the eyes from shampoos. Um, if you get shampoo in your dog's eye, you will create a chemical burn, which is not good, which can result in an ulcer in the eye, which could result in blindness. So you want to make sure that you put a couple of drops in each eye. And the way that I'm doing this is you can see I'm holding down her little hair on her chin to, to stabilize her. Then I'm using my other hand 
I don't know if you could really see, but I'm using my other hand to open up her eye and then squeeze in a couple of drops. That's it. So it's very simple to do, and you can do this with any sort of eye drops that you may have to use on your dog. All right, so that is it. I think I am going to do a separate video on the bathing because it's just going to be too long of a video. So that is it for this video. This is a pre-bath video on what I do to prepare Stassi for her bath. I will catch you guys on the next video in this series, which will be the actual bath. Thank you so much for watching us. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, and we will catch you guys on the next video. Bye guys, have a great day, and happy Sunday. I know that you probably won't be watching this on a Sunday, but if you are, um, happy Sunday. And it's a Sunday for me, so I'm gonna say happy Sunday fun day, um, grooming dogs for me. Bye guys, have a great day, bye bye.